Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Bible teacher Duffy Robbins, who just brought a great follow-up to our Transform series called Tarzan Christianity, and really talking about abiding. Mm -hmm. um, right. It's such a bridge, really, from finishing up Transformed and thinking, yes, I want my life to be transformed. I, God, I want you to move in it, but how do I do that? Right. And uh, today we talked about two things, really. We talked about the love of God's Word, cu yeah. cultivating the love of God's Word and being in His Word, and then being obedient. Right. To, um, yeah. So I have just a couple of questions around both of those things um, and some of your points. So whether I've been a believer, I'm a new believer, or I've been a believer for a long time, and I just don't engage God's Word regularly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, how do I cultivate that in my life? How do I grow that love for God's Word that you were talking about? Um, well, I think, first of all, let's be honest. Uh, scripture is kind of an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. I mean, some parts of it are, are sort of spicy. And maybe, you, you know, you go, oh, Revelation, you know, dragons and stuff, and and the whore of Babylon, you know, okay, this is intriguing. But, but, uh, but I mean, for the most part, I think it is an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. And, and to that extent, uh, I think it's, it's, it's something that we believe has value, that we believe it has some worth. And, uh, and we say, I'm going to consume this. I'm going to, I'm going to take this in, um, and, and, and trust that God will change my attitude. You know, the psalmist says, I think it's in Psalm 19, but it's a couple of other places as well, that your word is like a honey, you know, a honey, sweet, like a honeycomb. And, and, uh, but I don't think for most of us it's that way at the beginning. And the problem is if you, if you are, like you said, sort of new at this or you're just, uh, you know, you're not a person that reads scripture a lot, you hear these people talking about how it wasn't that sweet, wasn't that great, what a, and you're kind of going, hmm, oh, it's all right, I kind of dozed off, and after two or three doves were killed, I kind of lost interest, and, 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 uh, and so I think part of it is, is let's, let's just be realistic, that it is kind of an acquired taste. Some portions are more engaging than others. If I were just starting out, um, I would, so the first thing I'd do is say, this is an acquired taste, and I'm going to have to take some time to acquire it. But secondly, I would probably start with narrative passages of Scripture yeah. because I think they're, they're, um, they're more interesting. They, we, we all love a good story, um, and there are many, many good stories um, you know, in Scripture. So you know, it might be one of the Gospels, or, or maybe I would read you know, Exodus or, or Judges or, or Genesis or something like that. And then I think, uh, I think you know, Mark Twain's advice about... You know, he said, it's not the parts of the Bible that I, you know, don't understand. It's the parts that I do understand that trouble me. I would say give yourself permission if you're just all of a sudden you're, you're kind of cruising along and, and the next thing you know you're in a ditch or you're, you're just in the weeds and you go, I don't know what the heck we're talking about here. There's a bunch of names that I've never heard and places I've never been. To. Skip it. Go, you know, go on to the, you know, give yourself permission. Um, it's not a book like you read for school where you're supposed to start at the front and go to There's the back. The and so I, I, would, I would say those are sort of the ways one does it. Um, I don't, uh, you know, myself, I don't drink wine, but I think people who do drink wine, they will often say when I, I it, the first <laughs> taste. It's acquired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that it's an acquired taste. And, um, and, and so I think it's, it's, it's like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it, takes that it takes that time. Over time, you know, it becomes something that you savor, you appreciate its subtleties, and uh, this is my wine uh, gesture. I got that. Yeah, I got that. and uh, <laughs> and and so I think it's 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 going to be that you have to give yourself uh, room, though, to say, hey, if I don't love this the first time, that doesn't mean I, I'm I'm not susceptible to scripture. Yeah, that's good. That's good because yeah. it, it is overwhelming at first, especially if you don't read it a lot to, yeah. to try and understand. So that's a great place to start. And so when we're talking about obedience, mm -hmm. um, you were talking about um, being obedient because of the love God has given us. We mm -hmm. love him to be obedient. And you, you did a great job pointing out that um, our feelings don't always lead to action. Sometimes we have to commit to the action first mm -hmm. to get the feeling. So right. obedience is hard. 
we don't feel like doing some of the things I think that God asks us to do, not at least at first. Yeah. Um, can you talk more? And, and maybe never. And maybe never. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> Although yeah. when you can see when it's for your good, when you see yeah. those, it becomes yeah. a little easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so talk more to me about the about the faking it part. Let's just say, to speak more of what you're speaking about. Let's say I'm, I'm, I'm either relatively new to my faith or I'm trying to understand what it means to be obedient. Tell me where I start. What are things that I should be obedient to, okay. to make the decision that I'm going to be obedient to these things, yeah. even if I don't feel like it. Yeah. Well, I think, first of all, to recognize that, that we are a broken people. In other words, our appetites, our feelings deceive us. Yeah. And so, I mean, we know this because um, we consume foods that we know are not good for us. We neglect exercises that we know are good for us. I mean, so we know right off the bat our feelings are suspect that we overrule them routinely. And we all, you know, we, we do this. And so um, this is another instance in which we have to, you know, have some suspicion of our feelings and not just say, oh, I don't feel this, therefore I, I don't do it. Now, to me, that's partially, that's partially a matter of, of just common sense and intelligence, uh, whether you're a Christian or not. As I say, you, you, there are certain, you know, certain you know, eating a salad, whether that's, you, you say, I don't really feel like that, you know, but tough darts, I'm going to eat that. So um, I think you exercise that same discipline in, in, in your spiritual life and say, I don't feel like doing this, but I know it's good for me to do it. I know I, I should do it. Um, secondly is um, I would, uh, I would, I, I like to say, take baby steps. Um, in other words, I think um, there's sort of this idea uh, that that I have to do something grandiose and something yeah. big, and it's sort of that old deal of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Um, that if I if I I can think of some jobs that I have to do some tasks, when I think about doing that, I just go I don't want to do that. If I think oh, I'll just do this little bit, mm -hmm. um, so you know I guess it would be like if I were going to drive to California, I might go oh my gosh oh, that would take me forever. But if I go well I'm just going to drive you know. 200 miles, and then we're going to stop, or you know, we're going to eat, and and I'm going to sort of break it up. I think that's an important part of it. So if we're, you know, where I trying to kind of work this thing out in my own life, I might say, what are some baby steps that I can take? Baby steps of obedience I can take, mm -hmm. that perhaps I won't love it, but it will be less painful than taking the giant step that I know I hate. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and so I think uh, I would do it. I would sort of approach it that. way. That would be another way I would uh, sort of, you know, build in some of that. Um, and then, um, and then, as I said today, I really do think that sometimes um, our, our faking it becomes authentic. And, and of course, when I say, you know, act like you do, um, I don't mean necessarily, uh, you know, mime uh, obedience as much as I mean act it out act it out. That's the way we learn speech. That's the way we learn writing. That's the way we learn every skill is um, you, go, you, you say, I'm not going to play football until I really know how to play football. No, you, you have to get out there and, and, and do it. You have to kind of work on it. And, uh, and so I think to some extent, obedience is like that. Of course, you know, part of that is we're afraid we'll drop the ball, we'll fumble, you know, we'll, you know, run the wrong direction. But that's where grace comes into play is that this is not about you doing enough stuff that, um, that you can make God love you. God already loves you. He's already invited us to abide with him. To me, that's the wonder. Uh, I didn't talk about it today, but that, that it's, you know, I in you and you in me, that uh, this is not about, um, you know, Jesus saying, you've got you to gotta come all the way. I've already come. In, in fact, in Revelation 3.20, there's a parallel to, to what um, we see in John 15 where Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And I will, if, if any man opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. And so Jesus, in, in the image there is Jesus coming to our place. He's, he's not meeting us halfway. He's going 100% of the way. And so um, I think that's a really important part of it as well, that, uh, that I don't have to fear the fumble. I don't have to fear dropping the ball. I don't have to fear that I may get penalized. Uh, th th this is a God who, who loves me and ultimately 
in that passage, he says in verse 11, I'm not doing this to make you unhappy, to make you miserable, to, you know, uh, I am doing this so that your joy might be full. Good, good word. Um, so you're going to continue on next yes, week. We're going right. to continue looking at John. We'll be back. John 15. Yeah. Jump back in John 15. Yeah. Um, so we'll take those two things and be obedient with those yeah. this week. Yes. Yeah. So what a great word. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. It's yeah. a great passage. We're glad to have it's, you back. It's so rich. There's so much in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's really been fun kind of going back and studying it. Together. Awesome. Well, thanks yeah. for being here with us today. You bet, Thank, Thank you. you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.